All right. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to THC 111 Philippine Culture and Tourism Geography. Last time we were discussing about the Cordillera Administrative Region, and we were able to discuss some of the provinces in Cordillera. For today, um, we are going to discuss about Ifugao and Baguio. All right. So let's have. Ifugao. All right, Ifugao is considered to be the land of the eight wonder. Maybe you are asking as to why this is considered to be the eight world wonder. Let us further discover the beauty of Ifugao in this um, video. Created up to 2,000 years ago, according to some scholars, and then handed down for generations up to the present, they've been called a supreme national symbol of the Philippines. Built without forced labor or colonial help. Monuments to the spirit of a people who carved them out of these steep slopes a thousand meters above sea level. These are the rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras. Amongst UNESCO World Heritage Sites, they are special for being the first of their kind and one of only a few in the world designated as a cultural landscape, a product of both nature and local culture. The people here have reworked nature to sustain themselves and in doing so transformed the landscape to one of unforgettable beauty. The rice terraces can be found spread out over 20,000 square kilometers in the mountainous Cordillera region of northern Luzon. Among the most famous of them is found here in Batad, Ifugao province. The Batad Rice Terraces form a colossal amphitheater that rises to dizzying heights. This breathtaking site is a world-famous wonder, but it exists mainly for its original humble purpose, to provide rice for the consumption of the locals. Unlike many ancient cultural heritage sites, the rice terraces are as alive and in use today as they have been for hundreds even thousands of years. How and why did the people here, without the aid of modern technology, so dramatically transform this landscape into living, life-giving art? Rice has been cultivated in Asia for at least 4,000 years. The unique demand of rice to be grown in flooded paddies has made the rice paddy a common feature of Asian landscapes. The rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras, however, are anything but common. They are higher in altitude, planted between 700 and 1500 meters above sea level, and built on steep slopes with inclines of up to 70%. And yet, all labor in these fields, from building to planting to harvesting, is manual because the slopes are so steep that they can't use farm animals or mechanical equipment, proof of how essential rice is to life here. The terraces exhibit not just beauty, but also an astonishing level of sophistication in structural and hydrological engineering, along with environmental and agricultural management. And all of this has been passed down by oral tradition from elders to the next generations. To know the terraces, then, is to know the Ifugao people. The Ifugao rice terraces uh, is what identifies us as a people. So this is what keeps us as a people. This is what binds us as a people. It's actually one way of showing that we want to live, we want to struggle, and we want to live with nature, we want to live with each other. The uniqueness of the terraces and the culture of the Ifugao naturally produces a uniquely hardy and delicious strain of rice that germinates under freezing conditions and grows chest high, unlike lowland rice that grows only knee high. 
As a result, the women harvest the rice not bent over as we usually see, but rather standing proud. This posture reinforces the tradition of singing the Ifugao harvest ritual chant known as the Hudhud. In 1999, it was declared by UNESCO as one of the 10 most significant intangible cultural heritage of the world. For all the importance of the rice terraces, they are in real danger of decay. Weather and time have taken their toll on many of the terraces and they are highly vulnerable to worsening storms. But perhaps of greater concern is the gradual disappearance of the traditional practices and beliefs that sustain the continuing use of the rice terraces. The intangible cultural heritage of the Ifugaos is the soul actually of the tangible the tangible aspect will not be there without the intangible. We are going to the core of the matter, which is the lack already of interest. Next generation farmers lost their interest in maintaining the lifestyle. To me, even if we pour in investments for the repair of the rice terraces, the one question that we have to answer is who's going to stay behind and continue planting and maintaining the rice terraces? Many Fugao still believe in the importance of the rice terraces in the culture, but staying and making a living in the rice terraces, that's a big challenge. Given a choice, if you ask the younger generations of Fugao whether they'd like to stay in the rice terraces or not, I'm afraid most of them would opt for life in the city or overseas. Being a farmer is not a derogatory kind of life. You know, being a farmer and taking care of an ancestral heritage is an honor, actually. It's a family honor. The enduring tradition of the Ifugao people is the soul of the rice terraces. How can the people chart a path into the future that balances tradition and progress? Finding an answer to this dilemma will determine whether these widely admired world wonders will become monuments from a bygone era or continue to be living landscapes for another thousand years and more. For generations, the rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras have stood as monumental symbols of the determination of a people who fashioned them out of the great mountains with little more than their bare hands. This is irreplaceable heritage without equal in the world and the treasure for all mankind. All right, so that was the special documentary entitled Rice Terraces, the Monuments of Ifugao Spirit. So what are our key takeaways in watching this um, documentary or what have we learned watching this um, documentary although um, even before we were thought about the the cordillera at uh, the the rice terraces to be one of the eight wonder of the world but even up to this day i am it, it's a learning curve knowing more about this um, beautiful uh, man natural slash man-made gift that was given to us and watching the film i was able to discover more about the eighth wonder of the world um in in our previous um activity i have asked you to watch the documentary of Pamana by, by Cara David and we were able to learn a few things about the the eighth wonder of the world and this being tagged as the UNESCO's eighth wonder we can really see how beautiful this um, tourist destination is and this is something that is not um, this is something that is unique um, for for the rest of the world although there are some um 
a similar system to this in I think um, Indonesia they have the subak system but it is really incomparable with that of the the ifugao because um, this has been in existence many many or thousand years ago and this used to be mountains which have been carved by the by our ancestors with uh, with their tribe and one unique thing about the the highland um rice the planting of the rice is that as we have learned on the video na matataas yung mga um the produce of the rice as compared to the lowland rice na pag nagharvest sila is hanggang chest level lang or maybe knee level kaya mostly um as we have learned on the song magtanim ay dibiro maghapong nakayuko kasi when you plant the rice and when you harvest the, the rice nakayuko ka but on the upland or highland rice terraces matataas yung tubo ng kanilang mga palay and we have to stand this um their tribe because one we are a um, huge fan of rice we eat rice three times a day and rice is our staple food and <clears throat> it's just that um too bad that um as as mentioned that the even the governors in in ifugao are uh and the government of ipogao are are they are one of their problem is how they are going to sustain this gift because if you are to ask the the youths that they they would rather find other source of livelihood than 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 plant rice because as we are all aware hindi magkano na ang presyo ng palay ngayon mas mahal pa yung mga um, ornamental plants na dinidisplay sa bahay kesa sa bigas i think that ang presyo ng bigas ngayon is like 11 pesos per kilo and it's quite offending for the farmers considering when when this when you bring this af- i mean after milling magkano ang isang cup ng rice sa restaurant 25 pesos 30 pesos um, it's and it's just one cup, no? Pero kung bibilhin mo siya sa mga farmer, 11 pesos per kilo. Can you just um, imagine that? I mean, for so many months that they are to uh, nurture and take care of the the rice paddy. I mean, bago ka makaani, like four to six months. Tapos ganun lang kababa ang presyo ng ng palay. Is na it's worrisome na paano pa ito maipapagpatuloy. Plus, another um, debacle is that um, they are not receiving as much as um, finances or budget in the restoration of of this, of their culture, of their rice paddy. Kasi medyo yung ibang parts is gumuguhu na because of the wet, extreme weather condition. And it's really difficult to restore because um, since it's bundok or upland, um, bringing in mga rocks to maintain the riprap, you really have to bring this by hand. Because as compared to the lowland, uh, you have farm animals to help you work the the rice paddy. Sa, low, sa upland, is wala namang ganon. Because they don't have carabaos to help plow the land. I mean, they, they do this um, almost by themselves um, with their hands. So that's one of the pressing problems of the Ifugavs. And uh, also, we have what we call the tangible and the intangible. When we say tangible, is it's nahahawakan. But in the Ifugao, part of the what, what they are so much proud of is that the, the culture, the culture is pretty much preserved. Um, they have, uh, um, they are performing some rituals in, in everything they do, whether that's in planting, they, 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 they sing while they harvest, they sing while they plant, um, and in pretty much in all of the facets of life from, um, from birth 
to the birthdays, to the weddings, up to the death, they have a much preserved culture and tradition and, and it's still very evident even up to this date. And um, so what are some of the facts in Ifugao? The, the capital of Ifugao is Lagawe. They are speaking Tuwali, Amganad Ifugao, Batad Ifugao, Mayoyao Ifugao, Tuwali Ifugao, and there are 11 municipalities in Lagawe and this are Aguinaldo, Lista, Asipulo, Banawe, Hingyon, Hungduan, Kiyangan, Lagawe, Lamut, Mayoyao, and Tino. So, let's check on the famous tourist destinations and attractions in Ifugao. Definitely, Ifugao is more than just the rice terraces. They have other um, natural um, attractions that they can offer for the tourists. First is the Banawe Rice Terraces. It is a cultural, it's a natural cultural treasure of the Philippines and is considered to be the eighth natural wonder of the world by many Filipinos. The terraces are carved in the mountains of Ifugao and were most likely done by hand. As I have mentioned, if you would see on the photos, um, that from many, many years ago, the mountains have been carved by their ancestors and formed to be a rice paddy okay and uh, the second destination is mount napulawan it is derived from the ifugao term tuwale which literally means white perhaps this is because of the cloud and fog which perpetually cover the mountain locals also say that bibio or a fairy guards the mountain as we all know that in ifugao or generally in Cordillera administrative region that they are they believe in gods um, and it is said that uh, Bibio protects and looks after the mountain Mount Napulawan so this is something uh, slightly related to Mount Pulag because there's also a sea of clouds. That's why it's being referred to as Tuwale because of the whiteness that you would see from the sea of clouds in Mount Napulawan. The third is Kiangan Shrine, which is one of the historical Ifugao tourist spots. It signifies the locals' valiant resistance against the Japanese invaders. In fact, this is where General Yamashita and his troops informally surrendered thus officially ending the World War II in the Philippines. When we say resistance, it is very obvious that even up to the modern times, the, the rich culture and tradition of the Ifugaos are highly preserved. Ibig sabihin, even up to the modern times, look, look at them. They're able to maintain the culture and tradition that is being done many, many years ago and it's still being practiced even up to this day. And that is the product of their resistance, not only with the Japanese invaders, but also during the Spanish regime. Remember that we have been colonized for 300 years, but their, their culture have been pretty much preserved and they're not much Spanish or Japanese influence in their culture because they have a strong resistance that they don't that they want a preservation of their culture and tradition and the kiangan shrine is a testament of this resistance then the fourth tourist destination is tapia falls it's one of the famous tourist spots in banawe ifugao it cascades on the face of a massive rock cliff for more than 75 meters because of its sheer water volume and force, it created a wide and deep pool with churning waters. Its waters are cold and crystal clear, emanating from the mossy forest of Mount Amuyao and its adjacent ridges. Number five is the Batad Rice Terraces. 
It is known for its breathtaking view that resembles the shape of a huge amphitheater. One could just wonder how the Ifugao's ancestor built these majestic ma masterpieces using wooden tools and stones. So definitely, the Batad rice terraces is different from the Banawe rice terraces. As mentioned, the Batad rice terraces has a shape of a huge amphitheater. An amphitheater is much like a ladder. All right, it's like imagine a movie theater. All right. So with the high slope, can you just imagine how the ancestors or our ancestors are able to carve this mountain to come into the shape and to be um, a paddy for the plantation of rice? So definitely it's a natural wonder and it's a gift from God and a gift from nature. Number six is Pangagawan Cave. It is one of the hidden gems found in Barangay Bolog. Inside the cave, there are tight spaces and literally you will need to squeeze yourself to get deeper. You will also get wet and muddy. So when you enter the cave, definitely you will see different rock formation and also different flora and fauna. The Ifugao tribe is celebrating Imbaya festival. The Ifugao culture celebrates rice planting and harvest, and rice wine was scheduled for the next day. So since their main product is rice, they glorify and honor the, this, um, this gift of nature. So during the rice planting season and harvest, they, have, they perform the Imbaya festival. So definitely there's um, singing and dancing, and there's so much culture and tradition that is very evident during this festivity. They also have the Punuk Festival. The Punuk Festival of Hongduan is an annual celebration that marks the end of the harvest. The festival starts with a march and a round of chantings within the terraces. The participants carry with them apparatuses needed for the ritual. This includes the pakid, a hook-shaped wood used for tug-of-war in lieu of rope. They also bring the kinaag, which are stalks of rice bound neatly with vines. The rice is used to form a human-like figure. Three barangays are involved in the Punuk festival. This would be the Baang, Nunggulunan, and Hapao. In Ifugao, they value so much of their products, delicacies, and cuisine. And one of this is baya, which is a rice wine made from the native rice of Ifugao, which is best known and it's widely used during the ceremonial occasion and during the bountiful harvest as part of their feast. As we have mentioned earlier in the Imbaya festival, after um, singing and dancing um, during the planting and harvest of rice, a rice wine drinking was scheduled for the next Day, and they would be drinking baya. Rice wine is not necessarily new to us. Um, in some other parts of the country and also other parts of the world, they do have rice wine. In Japan, they they also have rice wine, which is they 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 promote this as part of their culture. But um, in in Ifugao, the baya is uh, what, what makes it unique is because this is being used for ceremonial occasions during the bountiful harvest. Next would be the pinunog or the blood sausage. The blood sausage of the Ifugao is this is their um, version of longanisa. This is similar to the longanisa or the common sausage that is available in the market. And this is not necessarily new because in, in European countries, they have the morcilla or the blood sausage. So definitely, um, alongside with the meat, they are incorporating or adding animal's blood into the sausage, which definitely gives flavor and color to their sausage or longanisa. Next is tape, which is rice mixed together with the local wine. It is meant to have a sweet taste because of the addition of 
baya. In Japan, they, they also mix rice with rice wine. So, this is, tape is pretty much like that, um, the one that they do in Japan. Then, they have binaod, which is considered to be a Filipino delicacy. The pig intestines are prepared just after the pig manure have been dried and collected. This is eaten with sayote leaves that cover rice. So, it's like our isaw. Um, the pig's intestine are being cleaned and dried. I'm just not sure of the method of cooking, but this is being mixed with sayote leaves and rice. So this is the baya, which is their rice wine. This is their pinunog or the blood sausage. And this is their tape. And you see, binaod is much like a um, isaw. Okay, so let us now go to Baguio City, the summer capital of the Philippines. I'm sure that most of you have visited Baguio City, but I'm sure that there's more to discover in Baguio City. And actually, we have just concluded the Miss Universe Philippines 2020, which is being done in Baguio City, particularly in Baguio Country Club. So to learn more about Baguio City, let us watch this short film. This is my city. My city, where tradition and modernity harmonize. Where the pulse of the culture is felt with every beat. Where distinct backgrounds come together as one and diversity is celebrated through amity. This is my home. My home. Where every climb, every step, and every move is made towards progress. Where inspiration is drawn when the mind and body come together. Where every sip feels like a warm embrace. And nature can be experienced in every corner. That was the cold escape. And let's watch another video, which is a 2019 travel film featuring Baguio City, the summer capital of the Philippines. There is more to Baguio than just strawberries. You may enjoy the St. Ferdinand Cathedral, the Wright Park, the pine trees and the cold weather in Baguio, the sunflower, the beautiful sunset, the people, the fresh harvest the mansion the cold cup of coffee The majestic view at Mines View. The sumptuous delicacy. Warm accommodation.
Burnham Park, Mines View, Strawberries, Try Horse Back Riding, Enjoy the Art and the Cityscape. The Mansion House All right, that was a travel film, a 2019 travel film from our travel dates. Okay, I hope that you're able to enjoy the video. So let us uh, discuss in details what Baguio has to offer. As we have said, Baguio is considered as the summer capital of the Philippines. And people from Baguio are um, speaking Ibaloy, Ilocano, Tagalog, Kankanae, Ibaloy, Ifugao, Kapampangan, and Pangasinan. And let's, although I have shown in film the different tourist destinations in Baguio, there are, let, let's learn further what Baguio has to offer. All right. First, Famous tourist destination in Baguio is, of course, Camp John Hay. It is a paradise nestled in the city of Pines. Camp John Hay gives you a taste of pleasure and adventure. Outlined with numerous leisure spots, activity centers, shopping outlets, and food joints, every corner is absolutely fun-filled. And this is a favorite spot for couples, for friends who would just like to hang out, or would be couples who would like to have a prenuptial photo. Same with Burnham Park, which is a thickly wooded and it's a great place to have picnics and concerts. The place is equipped with tennis and basketball courts, a football field, an athletic oval, and an orchidarium. Or you may want to try just walking in the park, enjoying the local food, um, or ride this um boat okay try it with your friends or you may just have a picnic on on the side or watch a concert or eat some ice cream the third famous destination is emilio aguinaldo museum in 1985 a daughter of revolutionary hero emilio aguinaldo built a museum in the summer capital to house what the family claims is the original philippine flag that was unfurled in 1898 in Kawit Cavite, which she had found tucked under her father's death bed. Number four is the Botanical Garden. This garden is much more than flowers and fauna. However, it is said to be a spiritual center where the spirits of the native Igorot people dwell. You'll see native hat and replicas of the local Igorot people paying tribute to their cultural legacy all around and just in front of the botanical garden um Baguio city is also famous for silver work works so just in front of the botanical garden if you would want to have um jewelry um you may just get across botanical garden and find some local shops offering um silver works and jewelry of course Baguio is famous for their Panagbenga Festival, which is a flower festival, which is celebrated every February. This is a long annual flower occasion occurring in Baguio. As I've said that Baguio is more than just strawberries. They offer beautiful flowers. And one of the flower that is popular in Baguio is sunflower and also everlasting in which we put... Um, in, in the altar, which is a famous pasalubong when you go to Baguio. Um, the Panagbenga Festival was created as a tribute to the city's flowers 
and as a way to rise up from the devastation of the 1990 Luzon earthquake. Just like um, the devastation of the uh, the harvest of um, sugar cane in Bacolod, um, they produce the Mascara Festival to as a way to rise up from the devastation of the harvest, poor harvest of the sugar cane, um, as an answer to the depression of the people during the 1990s, they they, they created um, the Panagbega Festival sometime in February uh, to, as a merriment and festivities because um, they would want to lighten up the mood of the people. And definitely when you see flowers, um, it gives you smile. Alright, so what are the popular pasalubongs that uh, you would want to bring home when you visit Baguio? Definitely, um, a trip to Baguio is not complete without visiting um, the nuns of Good Shepherd, uh, which is famous for ube jam. As we all know that ube is... Um, um, derived from the purple yam, but right now, um, as I've heard on the news, because of the global warming, um, they are hardly um, having uh, the purple yam. Instead, um, the farmers are growing the white yam. So, para siyang ube, but it's color white. But the taste is much the same. Ayaw lang nilang lagyan ng parang artificial food coloring. So, instead of the violet ube, they have the, the white ube. But the taste is um, just the same. And uh, one of the objectives of the, the, in the Good Shepherd is that the one who produces the ube jam and other products and delicacies that you can have as pasalubong are to provide scholarship for the students. So the students are the ones who prepare the, this wonderful delicacies with the supervision of the nuns. Um, and the proceeds of... Uh, the, the selling of the products are um, put into the charity, all right? So definitely, um, a trip to Baguio is not complete without strawberry jam, lengua de gato, peanut brittle, fresh fruits and vegetables. Fresh fruits and vegetables in Baguio are very cheap. Um, it's very cheap and it's very fresh. Um, the quality of the products of, of this fresh farm produce are really um, in, uh, export quality. And also Baguio is known for um, Benguet coffee. So what uh, a good way to enjoy the cold weather is a hot cup of coffee. Then also you may take home flowers and plants, herbs um, that you can take home. Um, Walis tambo, of course. Then um, pretty much everywhere um, in the streets of Baguio, you may enjoy a strawberry taho. So instead of the regular um, sugar syrup, the taho or the soft bean curd is flavored with um, strawberry syrup. So that's uh, just a cheap um, street food that you may enjoy not only in the morning but any time of the day that is available in Baguio City. Then of course, hot chocolate it or chocolate de baterol is like sipping a cup of thick cream that has been made a little more firm by constant beating from the molenillo. It's a wooden beater or whisk yet it is that simple, calorie-defying, ultra-rich, comfort, food, cocoa with no conscience for dieters. So, chocolate de baterol is, uh, what makes it unique is, um, this is like a freshly brewed um, chocolate from the tableya. And what makes it unique as well is the use of the molenillo or yung, um, it's like, I'm not sure if there's a photo. Ah, uh, there's no photo here. But, um, it's like on a mug or a, um, uh, or 
there's a special container for that and you have a wooden wire whisk and you have to continuously whisk it by hand thus producing a thicker volume and consistency of the hot chocolate which um, adds to the beautiful experience sipping a hot chocolate de baterol. Then of course a trip to Baguio is not complete without the sundot kulangot or the Baguio kalamay. It's a type of kalamay that is made up of coconut milk, brown sugar, and glutinous rice treat from Baguio City which comes in this cute packaging that comes in shell and bamboo. Okay, so this will be the strawberry taho. So there's strawberry syrup, there's tapioca pearls, and there's chunks of strawberry. How about that? And this is chocolate de baterol. So I'm sure that you have been engorged with the beautiful tourist destinations in Baguio and the fine selection of the products and delicacies and uh, the Panagbenga Festival. Let's as um, because there's still time, let's uh, have this two more um, links that we can watch and enjoy Baguio City. The first one is another travel film. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me see. This way Can't get it now So stay with me It's not like we got big plans uh -huh. Let's drive around town That was a travel video of Baguio in 2018. Let's have another one. This will be the last.
Okay, so that ends our discussion for uh, Cordillera Administrative Region. We were able to discuss today Ifugao and Baguio. So I hope that you had a great time um, and I'll see you all on the discussion of our next topic. Thank you.